Hi, I'm Bridger Fates with Master Stockman Consulting, and welcome to our video series on applying research to farms and ranches. Certainly research is good. We've come a long ways from the technology that produced this old swather. Um, so, you know, research can be good and helpful on farms and ranches, but we need to make sure that it's gonna make some economic sense when we apply it to our ranches today. So we're gonna talk about some different projects. Today, the project I'm gonna talk about is interceding legumes into a pasture. So the idea is to reduce the requirement for nitrogen and increase production. So I'm gonna start out by talking to you about collecting some baseline soil samples and forage analysis and how you might utilize those analysis to make sure that the decision you're making on your operation makes sense. So with that, let's go to the live action. Good afternoon, today we're out here on a lovely Wyoming spring uh, evening uh, to get some soil samples. We're out here on Suzanne Petrin's place. Um, she was interested in trying to discover ways to um, reduce fertilizer uh, and so uh, she's participated in this project where we've interceded um, some legumes to try and create some natural nitrogen fix fixation and reduce fertilizer need. Suzanne was also interested in some other projects in terms of looking at uh, different fertilizer rates as well as using some uh, uh, sea minerals um, to see if that if that would improve as well and, and help with the fertilization. Uh, so we've got a few different projects. The one we're going to focus on here is the interseeding uh, project um, to reduce, reduce fertilizer. So we're out here today uh, taking soil samples. Uh, we'll get a couple of soil samples uh, here for each of the conditions. And then we've also been taking forage samples each uh, fall as uh, uh, she takes the hay off of this place. And so with the forage samples and the soil samples, we're really able to track uh, the impacts of the uh, interceding project that we've been working on out here. So we're excited to, to get some results and share those with you. Um, but we're out here uh, just finishing up uh, getting some soil samples today. So Bridger, uh, why did you pick your inner seeding of legumes for your project? Yeah, that's a good question, Brian. It's, it was kind of an interesting thing. Over the years, it's one of the more common questions I've gotten uh, as a, an extension uh, educator. You know, a lot of times producers would call me or, or new uh, uh, landowners would call me and say, hey, what can I intercede in this? You know, I'm really I'm really wanting to save on fertilizer or, or some folks just don't want to use fertilizer. They would rather use a more organic approach. And so the question comes up often is, you know, what can I intercede in terms of legumes to be able to, to be able to capture some of the atmospheric nitrogen and, and help my pastures and improve my, improve my pastures uh, by reducing and maybe either reducing uh, fertilizer cost or in addition to fertilizer just increased production overall and then the other the you know the other thing folks are interested in is just improving some of their forage quality so adding in some legumes with a little more protein content to increase the forage qu uh, quality of, of their uh, pastures so what do you guys think about it what do you what do you see as positive and negatives about this project I think the thing I like about it is really similar to the reason you chose it Bridger you know as I've been out as I've looked at pastures and said boy that's that's the kind of pasture people should try to have this is the kind of you go out and you take a look and you take it and and, and see how it's being managed but almost always there's uh, um, multiple different species of grasses with legumes in it there's a mixture of things out there in the pasture along with the way it's being managed and it, it seems more productive, it seems a lot healthier, the soil's covered, and it, it just always seems like when you're in a pasture that has legumes in it, there's more production, the production's more quality, and and it just works every year for them. It just, it just keeps keeps going, and, and I'm sure, you know, here in the West where we're doing these videos, it's because our soils are so nitrogen deficient that nitrogen's always a good thing, right? Especially when you don't have to put it on with the tractor. Yeah. yeah, and it's just nice that you have a wide variety that you can select from. That's the other part, you know, hitting on what you've already talked about. You aren't stuck with just one legume that you actually have to add to that mix. You can try different uh, species that are out there. 
and kind of work with what's going to work the best for your area, your climate, your soils, and different things like that. So that's really nice as well. Well, it's a question that, you know, you've gotten and we all get about, you know, implementing legumes into a mix, but, you know, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do it. And also to, you know, establishment do's and don'ts for getting those species established in a pasture are also important considerations for, for those producers. Yeah, I think that's the biggest drawback that I could see uh, looking at this project and, and doing a case study is that establishment is really key and, and it's easy to get that wrong and, and miss a year or, or more and have to double up on the cost. So, you know, getting the establishment right is the big key to success on this project. I think the rest of it is pretty, you know, it kind of works itself out, but getting that establishment piece right is, is really important. We've already talked a little bit about this project and talked about the, the concept behind it, but now I'd like to talk a little bit more specific about the Western Sarah project that, that we worked on for this, uh, for these videos. So this project is reducing nitrogen fertilization by interseeding lagoons. And it's a Western Sarah project OW10-309. Some of the main questions that I've gotten from producers as we've talked about this project are you know, some fairly straightforward questions like which type of drill is best to use. The project used no-trail drill or a power tail drill and had fairly good success with both. Another question is what time of year uh, should you intercede for best results? The project in both of their locations uh, interceded in late May to early June. And then another question is, how do I efficiently suppress the existing grasses? As you'll see in some of the data that I'm gonna uh, present to you here in just a minute, it does really look like to be successful with this interseeding that you really do need to suppress grasses. And the project looked at several methods, including mowing, uh, intensive grazing, but the method that they found to work best was to choose a sublethal application of glyphosate. Now it's a little tricky. Um, you know, if you put too much um, glyphosate down, uh, you're really starting over as you can, you can kill out your grass. And if you put too light of a, a application down, it's inadequate for suppression. So really be careful in terms of how you dial that in. But the project found that that glyphosate suppression really did offer the best uh, opportunity to, to intercede these lagoons. Another common question are which legume species are easiest to establish, and which are most persistent. In terms of establishment, you can see the project, uh, the Western Sarah project established uh, rugged alfalfa, bird's foot trefoil, sandfoin, uh, red clover, and white clover. And the ones in bold are the ones that they found established the easiest. So the rugged alfalfa, the Norsen bird's foot trefoil, and the starfire red clover were the, were the ones that they felt like established the easiest. In terms of persistence, uh, the alfalfa and red clover were very persistent as well as the white clover. And white clover can also be effective at spreading over time. So in terms of persistence, those were the ones that the project found to be the best. So how is yield and quality affected by interceding a lagoon? Well, these are the two sites from the Western Sarah project, the Colorado site and the Idaho site. We can see that the average control production was 1,091 uh, pounds per acre in the Colorado site. And they saw improvements, um, for instance, in the alfalfa interceded uh, site, there was 3,243 pounds per acre, so a ton to the acre um, improvement over that control. And if we look at the average improvement um, with these different seedings, we're still at 1965, so almost a thousand pounds uh, more to the acre than the control, which is about, you know, a half a ton per acre more. If we look at the Idaho site, you can see that this site was a far more productive site to begin with, with two ton to the acre or 4,000 pounds to the acre uh, before. And after, um, other than the red clover, 
the increase in production was very slight uh, on, the, on the rest of the, the legumes. In terms of quality, uh, it did increase the quality of the, of the forage, as you might expect. Certainly, a lot of these legumes, alfalfa, trefoil, much higher protein uh, content than the grasses that they were being interceded into. So certainly, it can increase your quality by utilizing this sort of a project. So I want to look at some, some of the assumptions in terms of how would you analyze this for your operation from an economics perspective. So if we look at just the seed cost, total seed cost um, based on this project uh, was $151.16 per acre. Certainly as you look into this sort of a project for your operation, your total seed cost may be more or less than that, depending on the current price of seed and your location. We also figured in the cost of the glyphosate and spraying uh, to, to suppress that grass before seeding and the cost of no-till drilling. So we had a total cost per acre of $182.16 for this project. And if we looked at an increased production, so the sort of the best case scenario that we had in there was about one ton per acre of increased production. So if we value that ton per acre at $180 per ton on a 10 year average price, how long would it take us to pay, pay for this uh, project um, of interceding? So using the Wyoming Ranch Tool site and using the net present value analysis tool, we enter in the investment cost. It cost us $182.16 per acre. That's that total cost to intercede. If we want to receive a 7% return on our investment, um, it's one way you can think of this interest rate. Uh, certainly, you know, if you have to get a loan or or if you're getting you know, a line of credit from the bank and there's an interest rate tied to that, you would certainly want to add that. Depending on how successful you think it might be uh, on this interest rate too, you can add some risk. So if you think it's relatively risky that you're not going to have a successful establishment, um, you know, maybe, the, maybe that right number is, is 10 uh, to 15% in terms of an interest rate. Uh, to help account for some of that risk. But once you've entered the investment costs, you enter the annual costs, and there's some increased cost in, in harvesting and irrigation based on, on a more productive crop. Um, and then you enter your annual revenue. So um, that First year, you're not going to see an increase in hay production or in forage production. The second year, you're probably not going to max out. Um, so uh, we put it in there at $90. And then the third year through the seventh year, uh, we put it in there at that full one ton per acre increase. So $180 uh, per acre. And then you can see it starts to to dwindle down as over time as um, the grasses start to retake some of that, some of those interceded legumes. So based on this, we have a five-year net present value. That means a five-year return above the 7% of $314 per acre with a break-even year of three years. So under this scenario where we were looking at sort of a best case scenario in terms of uh, a one ton increase per acre in production. It looks like this uh, can make a lot of economic sense uh, under the, so the assumptions that we made. Now, keep in mind, if we had a crop failure or uh, an interceding failure, so we interceded one spring and we didn't get any uh, germination, um, so you had to intercede a second time, then this total investment cost would be up here at uh, $360 instead of $182.
and you would be uh, extended out in terms of when your annual revenue start. So, you know, one sort of a, a failure in terms of an interceding process can move that break even year from three uh, out to closer to 10 in a pretty big hurry. So you, you really need to be aware of those things as you, as you analyze these research opportunities uh, to put on your own place. Well, we'd like to thank you for watching these videos. Uh, we appreciate Western SARE for sp sponsoring a portion of, of the cost of uh, bringing these videos to you. We appreciate the projects uh, that research have developed uh, through Western SARE. And we hope you understand after watching some of these videos, some better ways to incorporate new potential research, whether it's coming from Western SARE or other sources into your operation and how to evaluate those to make you a better manager. Thanks for watching the videos. And please comment below if you're interested in, in providing us with some information and some feedback in terms of these, in terms of these videos. And that helps us as we, as we continue to apply for grants and, and produce these videos for you guys to watch.